Welcome, everyone, to the Wittes Maintainer talk. My name is Deepthi Sigredi, and I'm uh, the tech lead for Wittes, and I'm a software engineer at PlanetScale. Uh, hello, I'm Kazimir Solulis, software reliability engineer in Vitesse databases team, and we'll be presenting uh, user star of Vitesse invented. And uh, I'm Florent Poinsard, I'm a maintainer of the Vitesse project, and I'm also a software engineer at PlanScale. So today we're going to start by presenting to you what is Vitesse. We're going to give a brief overview of the project. And then Casimiras will talk to you about the Vinted user story, their adoption, and how they're using Vitesse. And finally, Deepthi will talk to you about the new and, up and upcoming exciting features of Vitesse. And at the end, we'll have some time for questions and answers. All right, let's get started. What is Vitesse? So Vitesse is a cloud-native, scalable, and distributed database. It is built around MySQL. In fact, it started in 2010 at uh, YouTube as a scaling solution for MySQL. Later, it was donated by YouTube to CNCF in 2018. And then it became a graduated project a year later in 2019. Uh, it is massively scalable because we have sharding in uh, Vitesse, which allows you to partition your data across multiple primaries. And then it is highly available because we, whenever there is a failure on the primary, we're going to we're going to detect it and repair it. Uh, so Vitesse is widely used in production by many, many companies from small to extremely large. And we have a few key adopters like Slack, who's running 100% on Vitesse. So every time you send a Slack message, it's going through Vitesse. We also have GitHub. Um, they're running all of their issues and pull requests on Vitesse. And I think they have a little bit less than a million QPS on average. We also have Vinted, which Casimiras will talk about soon, but they do about 2.2 million QPS. And finally, we have PlanetScale database servers, where they have approximately 10,000 different uh, Vitesse clusters running in production. So, of course, we're uh, an open source project. We have about 15 maintainers working on the project. And over the last year, we had a little bit more than 250 contributors from which 115 were code contributors. All of those came from 47 companies, and the code contributors came from a little bit more than 20 companies. So before I move, into the, move on to the more technical part of the talk, we should introduce four key words for, uh, about Vitesse. So first one is a key space. So a key space is basically the same as a MySQL logical database. So you can have the user key space, and inside of that key space, you're going to have a bunch of tables related to the user data, like users, users, meta, metadata, et cetera. And then we have a shard. A shard is basically a subset of that key space, and you can have one or more shard per key space. And every shard is composed of one primary and at least and one or more replica. Um, we have vSchema. So vSchema is a specification on how you want to shard a specific table. And it is user-defined, it's flexible, and, uh, and that's it. And then we have a Vindex, which is used inside of the vSchema. That Vindex is basically going to be the same as a MySQL index. Uh, here's a diagram of the architecture of Vitesse. On the right-hand side, we have shard 1, 2, 3, N. And like I said before, those are composed of one primary and then one or more replicas. And then we can see if we look at the primary, for example, we have MySQL D and VT tablet. So the MySQL D is basically the MySQL D instance process. Uh, that's where we're going to store the tables, etc. And then attached to it as a sidecar, we're going to have VT tablet. So VT tablet is going to send and manage um, all the queries, sorry, it's going to send all the queries down to MySQL D, and it's going to help manage uh, MySQL D as well. VT tablet is connected to VT gate, which is the central component here, and it communicates through gRPC and the SQL protocol. So yeah, VT gate. So that's like the most user-facing component. It's, um, it connects to your application using also gRPC or the SQL protocol. And it's going to receive a query. It's going to parse the query and interpret the query. And then it's going to send it down to the proper shard and key space. 
Uh, in yellow, we have the control plane. So Vitis TLD is the CLI tool to administrate Vitesse. VTORC is the orchestration tool. This is what allows us to detect a failure and repair the failure in the cluster. And finally, we have VT admin, which is the UI of, the, of Vitesse, the administration UI of Vitesse. And in red, finally, we have the topology servers. So those can be usually ETCD, Zookeeper, or um, I think that's all that we support. Maybe we support more, but usually it's ETCD. Uh, so why would you want to use Vitesse compared to Vanilla MySQL? So we're trying to be as compatible as possible with MySQL. So we're adding query support um, over each release to be the, as compatible as we can. Uh, we have resharding, which allows you to resard your data in as many shards as you want. We have materialization, which is almost the same as the MySQL materialization, but we update the view in real time. We have cluster management, so we have different tools to allow you to manage your cluster. We have non-blocking online schema changes, seamless backup recovery operations. We also have query consolidation, so let's say you have a student spike in, in your queries using the same query, we're going to send that query only once to MySQL, get the result, and respond to all the queries at the same time from Vitigate to not overload the MySQL. And then we have automatic failure detection and repair. So that's thanks to VTORC. Now I'm going to pass it to Kazimelas to talk about the Vinted user story. Uh, hello again. I will present how and why we use at Vinted Vitesse clusters. Uh, let's start what we do. At first, uh, Vinted applications allow to sell uh, second-hand fashion easily and safely. And with over 80 million users in 19 markets in Europe and North America, we are on the uh, aim to make second-hand fashion preferred, world, uh, preferred choice worldwide. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited to present here in Paris because uh, in even all the France, our user community is the biggest and <clears throat> That's why a few years back we decided to start here our second brand, Vinted Go, that uh, helped to uh, make uh, better control of, of shipping of packages and take an uh, impact on climate of shipping. And currently, Vinted Go works in over 90 cities in France with over 1,500 pickup and drop off points. And whenever a user Add some item to sell on uh, Vinted Marketplace. Sends any message or ships any package. All this information is stored in one of our Vitesse clusters. Uh, we are running uh, currently Vitesse version 11 with some backports, mostly uh, some bug fixes or improvements for operations. Uh, all the clusters runs on bare metal, uh, managed by uh, all the hosts are managed by Chef. And for any cluster level operations like monitoring, backups, provisioning, we write a workflows using a temporal system. Um, as the Vitesse is cloud native, we would like to move this way. And first steps we're taking, we're moving VTGates to Kubernetes. And currently we have uh, over an 80 uh, clusters. And these clusters run uh, over 200 shards. It's all the shards consisting from eight VT tablets uh, paired with a MySQL instance, and they're spread through two regions. Like in every shard, uh, four VT tablets run in one region and four in another. Uh, and all this allows us to serve over 1.2 million queries from primaries and about 1 million queries from replicas. We have about 30 terabytes of data and we run 5,000 vStreams to export uh, data changes from Vitas to other systems like data warehouse or search clusters. Uh, and why Vitas? Uh, one of the features that I like in Vitas is throttling API that allows developers when they need to backfill some data or change a lot of data in the database, they can write a job which asks first the database, uh, is it healthy enough? 
and then write a small batch and ask again in this way, uh, allowing to throttle if the database comes up to its limit and allows to, uh, for us to avoid some outages if we accidentally try to write a lot too much data than the cluster can sustain. Uh, when we first moved to Vitesse, we initially had multiple MySQL clusters that were sharded from application side, uh, but we saw that we uh, need a better solution. We started testing Vitesse, uh, wrote a benchmarking tool that allowed to capture our workload from application, like all, we had a feature switch that when we send some query to Vitesse, we would send the same query to Kafka. Then we would uh, query on some metadata. And from that metadata, we would uh, collect uh, queries from the same request into separate batches and could replay on a test environment. Uh, and then let's say migrate that environment to Vitesse and compare how it goes. Uh, and our uh, test show that it has added just two milliseconds per query latency, which is very nice with all the additional features that we get. Uh, so we switched to the test. Initially, we switched to version eight and later upgraded to version 11. Uh, used the same uh, benchmarking tool to see how the upgrade, upgrade would go. Uh, uh, another very nice feature of Vitesse uh, is moving data inside the cluster and even importing from MySQL clusters. It's called the vReplication and we diff for verifying this data move. Uh, and it allows not only to easily move the data, but after cutoff, it allows to replicate data back in case something goes wrong, like you provisioned too small cluster uh, on the other side. Whatever, we can switch back to previous configuration without losing any data. Uh, but the primary reason why we chose Vitesse is uh, that it allows a horizontal sharding on top of MySQL. When you have one cluster of MySQL having only one table that you do not have like what to move out, and it's already too big, like migrations takes multiple weeks, uh, backups takes very long, and uh, the query latency starts to rise because of the load. This is where Vitesse comes to help. Uh, we initially moved our clusters as they are into Vitesse, like every cluster moved to one key space with one shard, and later on we uh, started sharding the most loaded ones horizontally. Uh, this required some more tooling. Uh, first thing that we did, we enabled testing uh, in our CI/CD pipeline uh, on a horizontal sharded with us, that developers could just stay in the code, oh, these tables are horizontally sharded, and the test would run on actually sharded with us and tell them if anything fails, because the query compatibility on sharded is a bit different, and there's other things to watch out, like cross-shard transactions uh, or cross-shard joints that are more complicated. And uh, the other thing that like, tests do not catch all the queries, so we built a, uh, in our query logging solution that collects all the unique queries and we can run VT explain tool, uh, similar to MySQL explain. Uh, VT explain allows to see how we test with uh, execute the query. Uh, if it fails, if it succeeds, yeah, and running on these unique queries pretty much is enough to understand if your code would work when switched to horizontal sharding. Yeah, and what the benefit we got uh, there is a historical screenshot from our Grafana when we switched uh, one of the most loaded key spaces into horizontal sharding. Uh, how latency is dropped on primary, uh, on queries going to primaries. And all the magic behind this was like Vitesse horizontal sharding with four times more hardware serving this key space. So here is a very short overview of what we do with Vitesse, but you can read in our blog, winter.engineering, uh, these stories in much more details. We have multiple uh, blog posts, winter Vitesse voyage, how we migrated from MySQL to Vitesse, 
uh, how our CI/CD pipeline works, and we hope to have more blog posts to, about with this in the future. Thank you. We'll move on to the new and upcoming features. Uh, we did Wittes version 18 in November of last year and Wittes version 19 earlier this month uh, in the first week of March. So I'll cover uh, what is new in these two latest releases and then talk a little bit about what we plan to do in future releases. Uh, let's do query serving first. This is always a hot topic because MySQL is a moving target. They keep adding uh, syntax, new syntax, new features, and we have to keep up with those. Uh, some of the things that have been added in one of the last two releases, uh, basic support for selects using common table expressions. We've added experimental foreign key support. Uh, most Vitus users don't actually use foreign keys because at the scale at which people run Vitus, it's simply not practical to use foreign key constraints. Uh, there is a perceptible performance hit, but there are uh, smaller users of Vitus who would like to keep the foreign key functionality while still adopting Vitus. So this is still experimental, but it looks good and uh, people can try it out. The other thing that we added was support for views across shards. This is something that you just can't do in MySQL. Views are local to um, a given MySQL server, but with Vitus, you can actually create views that are cross shard, that are managed by Vitus, and uh, queries against those views work even when the underlying data has to go across shards. We've added better support for unions, derived tables, and subqueries. And we also revamped our benchmarking website. So this is the uh, Vitus sub-project that we call Are We Fast Yet? Benchmark.vitus.io. And we run uh, a certain number of benchmarks every day. And we also measure every new release against the previous release to make sure that there are no regressions in terms of query performance. And these include OLTP, OLAP, uh, which are Sysbench and also TPCC workloads. Uh, we have a new UI for uh, the website and um, it's much more usable than the previous version. Uh, we've added vSchema validations. As Flora mentioned, vSchema is how you specify to Vitus how you want to do the horizontal sharding and uh, it's done per table. Previously, it was possible to have errors in your vSchema and you would not find out until you actually started running the queries, whereas now uh, we actually do some validations upfront. We've added some uh, MySQL syntax extensions. We do this periodically just to provide usability for people who are using Vitus that through VTGate you can uh, execute some MySQL like commands which are not actually MySQL commands. And one of them, the new one, is vExplain. So the vtexplain tool that Vinted used to uh, check the query compatibility before they actually did their horizontal sharding, you can actually also use on a running Vitus cluster using vtgate. And vexplain will tell you how that query is going to be executed, which shards it will go to, whether it is cross shard, which uh, Windex will be used, and so on. We've also added support for deletes and updates with joins. Uh, moving on to other parts of Vitus, the CLI migrations and so on, uh, we've completely rewritten the Vitus CLI to use Cobra, and uh, we re-implemented all of the flags using Viper. Previously, we were using the built-in Golang flag library, which led to flag pollution. So if different Vitus binaries shared the same Golang package, they would all get all the flags, whether or not they were relevant. So uh, with Viper, we've actually been able to clean up all of that. And we also have the nice benefit of auto-generating the reference documentation for the CLI and the flags, and the flag reference docs actually make sense because whatever you see in the docs are all valid flags for those binaries. 
the other thing Viper lets us do is dynamic reload of the configuration. Uh, right now, a very small subset of the flags can be reloaded dynamically, but this allows us to add more flags to that set of uh, dynamic reloading of flags, which means that you don't need to restart the process, you don't need to send it a SIG hub. Uh, when the config file changes, it will automatically be reloaded. Vitus comes with a Kubernetes operator, and uh, in the most recent release, we actually uh, started letting the operator manage MySQL minor version upgrades. It is still considered too risky to do a major MySQL version upgrade purely through the operator. So this is minor uh, releases only. So for example, MySQL 5.7 to 8.0 is probably not a great idea to do an in-place upgrade on a running Vitus cluster. But if it's an 8.0 minor version, it's generally safe. And uh, you just change the image tag and the operator will manage a rollout of all of the components with the new MySQL version. Uh, we did a security audit of Vitess last year, and the results were published uh, by CNCF as a blog. And there were some recommendations that came out of that. The high priority things were fixed right away, but there were some medium priority issues that we fixed in the last couple of releases. Uh, we've also added support for incremental backups and point-in-time recovery. Point-in-time recovery is a Vitess feature that has actually been around for four or five years now, but it depended on being able to uh, read the bin logs from a bin log server, which had to be yet another component that you needed to deploy, make it highly available, and all those things. And that was complicated enough that most people would actually not use the feature. We have re-implemented the feature to not require a separate bin log server. We can just use the binary log files from MySQL to do point-in-time recovery. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is near zero downtime migration cutovers. So there are various operations you do in Vitess where it is possible to have downtime. Your primary goes down, you have to fail over to a replica, you have a certain amount of down downtime. It might be seconds, it might be a minute. But you also have planned operations. When you're doing maintenance on your cluster, you want to be able to fail over from a primary to a replica MySQL so that you can do upgrades and other types of maintenance on your primary. And those planned failovers, we want to be zero downtime. And Vitus has a functionality for buffering write, write traffic to the primary. And after the failover, once you have a new primary, that traffic will be sent to the new primary. Reads will still work. You can still do replica queries uh, while this operation is happening. There will be no interruption. But for writes, there will be a pause, and then the queries will be reprocessed so that you don't return errors to the client, to the application. But we've also implemented this buffering functionality for data migrations. So if you're, doing, if you're using Vitus move tables to move data from your existing MySQL into a Vitus managed cluster, there is a point in time where you've finished all the copying and you want to cut over traffic to the new cluster. Previously, there would be between 10 and 30 seconds of downtime during that cutover. But now that we've implemented buffering, you don't have that even during those cutovers. And the same thing applies to resharding. When you do resharding, as Kazimira has mentioned, when you do resharding, it's possible to switch back and forth and keep the uh, old cluster and new cluster in sync. The same thing works for importing data or doing vertical sharding where you're migrating tables from one key space to another. You can go back and forth. But each time, there would be a short amount of downtime. So what we have done is with buffering, that is as low as possible. Uh, next up, performance and reliability. We've implemented more efficient connection pooling. Previously, we would end up basically doing a first in, first out type of connection pooling where all of the connections would get used which meant that when you initially started, it would take some time for things to warm up because you had to establish those connections to MySQL and fill the pool. We now have a much more efficient connection pooling where existing connections which are free can be reused 
uh, much faster instead of having to fill the pool. So, may, so you may not even fill the pool if you don't need to. So that just improves the startup times for clients. And it's more efficient in terms of memory as well. Um, we've implemented faster hashing for sharding. Hash is the most popular function that people use as their sharding key. And uh, what this means is that whenever you're trying to access data, first we have to compute the hash and that, that, that tells us where that particular row lives. So this is in the common path and faster hashing means that all the queries get faster. Um, we have faster in-memory aggregations. When you have cross-shard queries, what we end up doing sometimes is fetching data from multiple shards and then in VTGate, in-memory, we may be doing a sum or a count or an average or some other type of function and all of those have been made faster. And the end result of all this is that when we ran the benchmarks on version 19, the most recent release, it ended up being faster on all the benchmarks compared, compared to the previous release. Uh, we've also implemented backoffs for online DDL cutovers. So online schema changes is one of the areas where Vitus really shines because this is a problem that the MySQL community has grappled with for many years and many people have built tools to make those things easier. And in Vitus, we have a Vitus native way of doing online schema changes. And we've just been making performance improvements to those uh, to make sure that we don't overload the database when we are attempting to do a cutover for an online schema change. And we've also implemented faster cleanup of the artifacts that online uh, DDL creates. Uh, the other thing we did, which uh, I think is a major win, is that the topology server, whether it's HCD or Zookeeper, where Vitus stores its metadata, tends to be a hotspot sometimes because all of the Vitus components read data from it and they set watches on keys in uh, the topology server. They pull it periodically to reload the topology data. So what we have done is that, for instance, there are many parts in, uh, there are many places in Vitus where we will be saying, fetch all the shards from the topo. And previously, we used to get them one at a time. What we are able to do now is to say, here is the prefix key, fetch all the shards in one call. So this actually leads to an order of magnitude reduction in the number of network calls we are making to the topo and the load that we are putting on the topo. We've also made uh, functional and reliability improvements to the incremental backup feature. Okay, so that was the previous releases. What's coming up? Um, we have started working on multi-table deletes and updates. We will be publishing fewer and smaller Docker images. Over time, the Docker images have grown and we want to slim them down. And the way we are going to do it is that we are going to stop shipping MySQL binaries in the Vitus Docker images. Instead, you can run with any published MySQL Docker image uh, and just run it with Vitus. Uh, we've implemented, we are in the process of <laughs> implementing Windex hints. So uh, a Windex hint is where you tell VTGate which Windex to use for the query, because sometimes if there are multiple Windexes on the same table, it may pick a less efficient Windex. We are adding support for more functions in cross-shard queries. We are also adding uh, new metrics in various parts of uh, Vitus. For example, we have a whole bunch of new metrics for throttling. Uh, we will be adding more uh, support for CTEs, so uh, deletes and updates using common table expressions, recursive uh, CTEs, those are all planned. And we also plan to spend more time doing performance optimizations. We have a bunch of resources. There's the website uh, where we have documentation, getting started tutorials. So um, the website covers the gamut from people who are just getting started to people who have been running Vitus for many years, but there are some new things and uh, there is new documentation around that. Source code is on GitHub and we have a Slack workspace. There is a link from our website to join uh, the Slack workspace. And uh, there are a couple of blogs that are worth reading. One of them was done by Slack, how they actually migrated everything, 
all of their data to Vitus. And another one from Square, now Block, where uh, they migrated their Square Cash app to Vitus and also did multiple rounds of resharding. That's everything we had, so it's time for questions. Yes. Thank you. Uh, in the Vinted presentation, you mentioned in your architecture something about eight, I'm not sure, uh, it was eight nodes per shard. And can you explain why eight? I'm a newbie. Does it mean that it, one primary, seven replica? So you have a lot of read? Uh, yes, uh, we run one primary and seven replica, but like two replicas uh, reserved for uh, exporting data to a data warehouse or some um, on the fly queries from developers if they need to uh, investigate something. So effectively like six serve production and two extra for longer workloads. He has it. Um, you talk about a failover time of up to one minute. So, uh, how do you detect uh, a failure of the primary, and and uh, what needs to be done during failover? Uh, so I can understand this uh, one minute uh, delay. Yeah. Uh, so we have a component called VT Orc, which monitors all of the VT tablets. VT tablet is the sidecar instance that is uh, managing the MySQL. So. VT Arc can, it's basically polling all of the MySQLs every second, essentially. And uh, if three, three consecutive uh, pings fail, what VT Arc will do is that it will check whether the replicas are able to talk to the primary. Because it is possible that the VT Arc itself is network partitioned from the primary. The primary may be fine, but VT Arc is not able to reach it. So VT Arc does the failure detection, which takes up to five seconds after your MySQL actually goes down. And then it'll do a failover to one of the replicas. And typically, it doesn't take one minute but it is possible for um, it to take, say, 15 or 20 seconds. So typically, we see failover times of around 15 seconds. But sometimes, it may just take time for some replicas may not be eligible for promotion, the way you have configured the cluster, right? Because maybe you have uh, distributed it across regions, and you want to keep your primary in a certain region. And it's possible that the replica you've, that is eligible for promotion is not fully up to date. Then you have to find something else which is up to date and replicate all the pending or the missing transactions from there, which is why I said it could take up to a minute. Mostly we don't see it taking up to a minute as long as the replicas are pretty up to date. Uh, okay, hi. Um, you were talking about um, point-in-time recovery, utilizing the MySQL bin logs um, inside Vitesse, so to speak, without using a bin log server. So the question I have is, um, where um, are those bin logs kept, and um, to, what, to what size can they reasonably grow before you have to cut them, allowing for which window of time without breaking down major function of the Vitesse service itself? Right. So um, typically, when Vitus is managing the MySQL, there will be a directory specified where everything is stored. All the MySQL files are stored there. And uh, at the MySQL level, you are specifying a bin log retention period. So that could be three days, that could be seven days. Depending on the amount of disk you are able to provision for the VT tablet, you would specify that. And that will be as far as you can go. You will not be able to go any where beyond that. So if you can afford to provision a huge disk, then you can have a 30-day retention, and you can go back up to 30 days. What we have seen is that people typically run with seven days of bin logs, and sometimes even shorter, depending on the volume of their updates. 
because there are some people who just do frequent updates. They have like a modified at date or last access date. Then you just produce billions of uh, bin logs and you simply can't afford to keep them for 30 days. So all that is configurable. Hey, thanks for the talk. Uh, you mentioned that Vinted is running AT clusters. Did you, do you, do you, if, if the technology um, scales horizontally, do you do it for maintenance purposes? What's the reason for so many clusters? Uh, like we effectively run one cluster per separate service that we have. Yeah, so we do not allow separate services to connect to the same with us, with this cluster, like separating database. Hello, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, question, um, do you, like, Vitesse supports uh, MySQL 8 and MySQL 7 databases where we are trying different features? Vitesse does support, well, we have just uh, end of life MySQL 5.7 exactly. support because um, MySQL 5.7 itself is EOL. So technically we really only support MySQL 8 at this point. But we are keeping a certain amount of MySQL 5.7 support so that people can migrate. So it is still possible to put Vitus in front of an existing MySQL 5.7 database and migrate all of the data into a MySQL 8 database. And uh, one last question. Um, is there any plan to make it work with Aurora database in AWS? Uh, we don't currently have any plans to make it work with Aurora. So the stance when it comes to something like RDS or Aurora or MariaDB, all of which people have actually run with us with in the past, is that it is very difficult for us maintainers to maintain that many versions. So if there is interest from the community and someone really wants to run it, then they will need to try it out. And we can help them, but it's just too much for the maintainer team to maintain so many different flavors. So there are people who ran it with RDS for a long time, and that worked. So I noticed um, in your architecture diagram, there was a little bit about big data and how that uh, queries, does that query differently? Can you explain more about how that works? So uh, in Vitus, you typically configure timeouts for the queries. And those timeouts don't apply if you are um, running in a specific mode. So when you're doing big data or analytics, you can specify that you want to run in OLAP mode, and then you d we don't time out the queries. They can run for a long time. So it's possible to provision a different type of replica, and you can provision it with more resources if necessary, and execute OLAP type queries. I think we are out of time, so we are happy to chat off stage. But thank you, everyone, for attending. This was really great, and I loved all the questions as well. Thank you.